What's your name, man? Jonathan Mayor Cotton. Jonathan Mayor Cotton, another Detroit bass player. Killed the upright. <laughs> oh, man, I got to ask you some questions, you know, mine. Uh, and hopefully some of these other bass players will ch chime in. Um, we got with us, we got my man. Tell us your name, sir. Brandon Rose. I know that. I already know that. <laughs> One of the best young bass players this side of Detroit. Uh, who else we got here? Tell us your name. John Rose. That's the Pops, the, the Brandon. Also have with us, tell us. Kern Rose. <laughs> Kern Brandon. <laughs> oh, oh my. Sound like you said, <laughs> sound like you said Corn Rose. But, <laughs> but, but, but you from the South though. I got Corn, corn Rose. rose. <laughs> oh, that's, that was awesome. Uh, and y'all, if y'all don't know who this is, just punch in Kern Bradley and you see this is one of the, this, this one of the biggest bass players out of Detroit currently, right now. Check him out. Um, also, we got with us, what's your name? Julianne Muir. Sound like his name, so you must be some kid to him. Relationship? Mother. Mother. How you doing? He plays great. What you think? I think so. Do you enjoy listening to him play? Yes, I am his biggest supporter and harshest critic. <laughs> you actually do have critiques for him? Absolutely. As for and bass, and he asks, and he asks, he still asks. And you, and you let him know how it is. Yes. No sugarcoat mom stuff. No sugarcoat mom. Stuff. <laughs> he's saying, he's saying no. That's, Honesty is good. Honesty is good. Do you play the bass? No, sir. Well, what's that in front of you? This is his uh, bass guitar. Oh, that's it. <laughs> that's his too. Yes, it is. Can you play? Can you give us a little of that on your outro? Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Also with us, we have another talented bass player who just started playing upright. What is your name, Al? My name is Sage Earl. Sage Earl. We just did an interview with her. You guys, you need to check that out. Just go look up uh, Detroit bass player Sage Earl interview, uh, and you'll see that. Um, if not, just go to YouTube and punch in Sage Bass Chick. You'll see that. And she plays, you play the upright now, right? The upright and the electric, yes. The electric and the upright. Also hang out with us in the basement. Um, who we got here? Mo Hughes. Mo Hughes, you play blaze, you play upright? No. <laughs> just just I regular. Tried. 
<laughs> just regular old <laughs> bass Her guitar, bass. right? Yep. We also have with us uh, Sage's dad, Tom. <laughs> so, man, let me ask you something, man. Well, you've been in the basement before uh, uh, when we had our upright night, right? Yes. I talked to you a little bit when we had the uh, the phenomenal upright dudes in here. Um, Bob Hurst. Bob Hurst, a Dan bass legend. Dan Pliskow. Dan Pliskow, who we just lost, an uh, awesome bass legend. And um, what was the first name? Rick Robinson. And Rick Robinson, another classic. All right, dude, y'all need to check that out if y'all want to know something about uprights. And uh, I talked to you a little bit, but this is what I need to know. When did you start playing the bass and why? Um, I started in the middle of fifth grade, so in elementary school. I went to a school where you couldn't play the bass at the beginning of the year. You could, you could play cello or any other instrument and switch to bass, so I did that. And then I switched schools. I went to Ann Arbor Open and went to Allen Elementary School and then my uh, orchestra instructor said you can switch bass if you can find a bass because there wasn't a bass at the school. And my mom went to Shar and uh, rented a bass the next day. So ever since then I've been playing bass. I played. I started playing bass uh, because my mom took me to a Juan Marsalis concert and the bass player Carlos Enriquez, I think his name is. He had a bass solo, and then I just decided that's when I wanted to play it. Ever since that, I wanted to play jazz bass. So that was um, in the fifth grade. Uh, how old was I? I was third, third grade. grade. So wow. I started off on uh, piano and drums, and like I think I broke a drum set. <laughs> Couldn't play, play piano well, uh, really well, and then uh, once I got the opportunity to play bass, uh, I definitely like took all advantage of that. Okay, that that is awesome. Now we have to be careful when we say the word bass around you, because that can mean the electric double bass upright, or it can mean a regular old electric bass. So when you started, did you start on the upright or the? I started on the upright bass. Okay, when did you start playing um, the regular old electric bass guitar? I know all the timelines. So, <laughs> after cello, fifth grade, he played the double bass and he started as classical musician, which he's classically trained. And so, um, towards the middle of sixth grade, the jazz interest started to peaking. Um, and at that time, his classical instructor had um, suggested that he not mix classical studies and jazz studies. Um, and a dear um, colleague of mine, um, who was actually a music instructor in um, the same district that he attends school, said her son, who was also a Jonathan, did classical and jazz, and he was fine. So at that time, um, by seventh grade, um, my neighbor um, used to hear me crooning sometimes in the house and suggested that we go down and check out Baker's, and he started Kids in Jazz. Um, from 6th to 7th, um, and then started jazz, and then started studying with Marion Hayden, um, wow, in addition yeah. to his classical instructor, and he's done jazz and classical ever since 7th grade. That's awesome, Mom. She does have a timeline there. I can visualize it with the way she put it together. That's awesome, man. Um, which one do you like the best? The upright or the... Regular old electric. Um, I don't have an opinion pretty much. I like both. Uh, but if I was to play jazz, then I'd definitely pick this. Just because like the tradition and I feel like more comfortable, I guess, with jazz um, on the upright bass. But then, like of course, like funk stuff, I would definitely play on that. Just because like, of the range, I can go from like a low, low B to the, the higher C string. So, But overall, I'd like both. I would play both. Yeah, I was hoping you'd say that. Um, and, and I noticed when you was playing, you didn't look at your bass. Why not, man? Why you don't have to look at your your bass to play it? Uh, well, I think you should like know all the notes on the instrument, <laughs> I guess. So, just like when I first started, I did a lot of technical stuff to like find out, kind of like find my way on the instrument. And then like once you know like the basics, everything repeats itself. So like. Uh, since it's tuned in force, 
once you learn like basic scales and stuff like that and some fingerings you'll see that the notes just repeat like on on this bass like it's just like one string over like it's an octave on the next string so like so like that so once you know the basic stuff it'll just repeat itself and it's like that all the way up the thing then I can record so so you don't have to look at it no all right. Plus, it don't have no frets anyway. You can't. It ain't nothing to see anyway. You know. <laughs> That's what I love about that. Um, so last time you were here, I can I noticed an improvement in your play. It's like he was here in the basement. That's B A S S M I N T because I had I forgot to say that. But you uh you've did a little improvement since then. So a lot of practice or, or what? Uh, a lot of practice, and I've been uh, blessed to study with some people. So this fall, I studied with a guy who went there and applied uh, bass study with him, and he uh, took basically my playing to like the next level. I feel and like I feel like he can get a lot better, but he kind of just uh, was really strict. So I did a lot of finger exercises to kind of like get comfortable on the bass, and uh, he just really helped my playing a lot. And I feel like. Um, that's one of the reasons why I'm able to play as well as I am now, and I feel like I can get a lot better. What, what's his name again? Rodney Whitaker. Oh, yeah. the Rodney Whitaker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he, he stays, he do not stay too far from here, right? He teaches at uh, Michigan, Michigan State. State. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know what? Both of you guys sitting there together, I, I saw you guys playing upright. How are you doing on upright, Brandon? No. Hey, you ain't. Pursuing that, I the, mean, hope. Oh, I mean, I'm working on it, but it's. it's I'm, a I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm trying to stick to the electric. Okay. But, you know, venturing off to the uprights. That's not. That's not a bad idea. Right. Yeah. I, I just remember I saw you guys together, uh, on a, uh, at one of those base upright base thingies. The very first thing. Okay. So do you put the same care into the regular old electric bass guitar as uh, far as rehearsing and permutations and oh definitely yeah like um my some of my practicing is different on like for electric bass i'll play along with like a jill scott song because her last album i'm really into and then like i'll uh do a lot of technical stuff on this and then play along to some songs on this uh like older songs and stuff like that so it's different but then kind of the same in the same, in the same way Okay. Um, do on the electric bass? Do you look at it when you play it? At, like, because you don't look at that bass. Do you look at the electric bass? I do sometimes, just because uh, I haven't been playing the electric bass for as longer. So I look like stuff that I play higher up on the electric bass. I'll look at the frets just to make sure my hands are in the right places. <laughs> um, but I'm getting kind of like com more comfortable with it, so I don't have to look that much. At all. Man, now who are some of your favorite bass players? And if uh, you mentioned some names, let me know if they're electric or or acoustic, upright. Ray Brown, acoustic, upright. All right. Um, Rodney Whitaker, acoustic, obviously. Um, Charles Mingus, acoustic. <laughs> um, and then uh, electric, of course, Victor Wooden. Um, Larry Kimpel, which I've been listening to a lot, which oh, I listened yeah. to when uh, George Kimpel kind of got into him, and uh, James Jamerson, of course, because just kind of being around Detroit, like you don't, don't really have an option whether or not to listen to him. Yeah, <laughs> you did him eventually. Um, Marcus Miller, definitely, that's one I listened to him like once, I think, and I definitely kind of got hooked. That was a while ago. Um, that's pretty much. Mr. Hurst, Bob Hurst, I'm into him a lot as well, so that's pretty much it. Well, I'm some. Oh, excuse me, Chris McBride. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, man. All them awesome bass players. I'm sure anybody you listen and to a name is going to be My mentor, awesome. Ralph Armstrong, for sure. Another oh, awesome yeah. Detroiter. That's, that's the man, um, Ralph Armstrong, and he's. Funny, I don't see how y'all get to <laughs> rehearse because he's a, a hilarious <laughs> man, a, a basement alumni too, man. Y'all, y'all missed that one. That was funny, man. Um, so let me ask you this, Jonathan. What else do you do besides play upright basses and regular old electric basses? Uh, 
Uh, I'm, I'm an athlete as well. I play basketball. Pretty good at basketball as well. Um, <laughs> no, you don't play basketball. I do. <laughs> and then uh, school as well. Definitely important. So between music and school and uh, basketball, those pretty much tie up my days. Okay, so, so what, what grade are you in now? Senior, 12th grade. 12th grade. Wow, that's awesome, man. You ready to graduate? Yes. <laughs> what you going to do after um, graduation? Um, I've narrowed my college choice down to three choices. Um, Texas Southern University, which I visited in Houston uh, last weekend. It was really nice. Um, I'm hoping to attend uh, Michigan State next year to study with Rodney Whitaker again because just like studying with him all fall is phenomenal. And Wayne State would also be an option. I would be able to play basketball at Wayne State and hopefully uh, Texas Southern as well. So it would be definitely a great opportunity. All right. Uh, I was just got something to do with my next question, kind of. Um, music scholarship? Um, B or basketball scholarship? Which one? Or you you <coughs> finance this, your mom's financing this yourself? Oh, scholarships. I music or what? Um, well, Texas Southern, I got a scholarship for music, and then I would get a out-of-state tuition waiver, which means that I wouldn't have to pay, like, tuition at, like, so I'm not from Michigan. I would have to pay uh, tuition as if, as if I was from Texas, which is uh, the difference between like a couple thousand dollars over mm -hmm. the course of time, which is worth it. And then um, Michigan State, I know uh, I could get scholarships there, but I'm just waiting uh, to hear back. Uh, Wayne State, I didn't get any money at Wayne State, but I've applied for some scholarships uh, just through like libraries and stuff like that to see what I can get. Do they have anything called uh, music slash sports? Scholarship? Do those, do those exist? Cause I didn't know. I think I don't. I don't think they do. Um, because like with, I've talked to some of the schools and with basketball and music, it's like totally different. So like even if I did play in college, like I would have to communicate between the school of music and basketball because those are two different entities. Like, cause if I was a music major, then like I'm pretty like the music. That's my major, so I belong to them. But then basketball, so it, it's too. You can't. Yeah, you can't do them both. In other words, yeah. I think I could, but it would just be really tough. So I would just have to work a lot with my counselors and professors and coaches and stuff like that to get them on the same page like I did in high school. Okay, so what do you, what do you see for your future? What do you want to do? Do you want to play basketball professionally, or just uh, mumble around with it, or you want to play music professionally, or I you want to work at? Taco Bell, what, what, <laughs> what you got? What's your future? What you want to do? I don't know. I don't think Taco Bell. <laughs> um, I definitely want to tour the world. Uh, this year I got a lot of opportunities to play with some pretty phenomenal people. Like I played with Christian McBride in uh, October, uh, Regina Carter in December, and I can't think of right now. And then I also got to play uh, a set for Barry Gordy in September in the fall. So I definitely want to tour the world. Uh, it's like a something I've always wanted to do, which was, it was really good to hear your interview because it was kind of like you get to tour a lot and uh, see different places. So definitely um, touring the world pretty much is really what I want to do and then I would try to be a base college professor to give back to like what people gave me because it's like coming up as a musician, having support and having people in your corner, it's really like it makes you want to drive, keep going forward even if like it might be difficult at times. So. And, and like you say, just having that support makes you say, you know what, I got to pass this support on to the next uh, uh, group of musicians coming up. So that, I think that's awesome, man. So traveling the world around as a musician, not as a basketball player. Now you still you still want to play though, right? Yeah, definitely. I had a really good senior year. Man, maybe we ought to have a Detroit bass player's basketball <laughs> Day, you know, because yeah. everybody like. I mean, most of the most of a lot of musicians <laughs> like sports. You know what I'm yeah, saying? And, and like athletes the, like to play music, like Larry Lee. Yeah, Larry football. Lee. Yeah, yeah, a lot of us like to play. Uh, Cause I was, y'all can't tell by my size now, but I was a phenomenal six foot three with with hops, man. I can get up and dunk on anybody. And, uh, I can't do it now. Y'all got to drop the rim down, but <laughs> <laughs> well, well, maybe I can kill y'all some Nerf, but but, but we ought to we ought to think about doing that one day, man. Finding us a coordinate and uh.
playing some basketball. All right, man. Well, I ain't want to keep you, man. I just wanted to, you know, get a progress report since the last time we did interview. Same thing with you, Brandon. Y'all check him out. I did an update with Brandon as, as well. And Sage, I did your first one when you were these guys' age when I first did them. So we're going to need an update in a, uh, in a few years from you as well, you know. She's the young one out of the bunch. I ain't want to keep you, man, but uh, I want to know if anybody else have any questions for this fine bass player. Anybody have any questions for this fine bass player? Yeah, I got a question. I got a question and a concern. Okay, you're an athlete and you're also a bass player. What are your concerns when you're on the court as far as protecting your fingers or protecting your hands um, as a musician? Um, well, to be honest, it's like, I don't, I try not, I don't think about it as much, but mm -hmm. I've had situations where I've like jammed a finger and I've had a gig, but it ended up being like not, like I would jam my thumb and it'll mm -hmm. be my right thumb, which is just under here, so it's not, it's, not, it's, it's, not a, it's as, expendable. Like, as bad, whereas if it was just one of these fingers, or the pinky, or but like, or yeah, I've had a couple of times where I think I jammed my middle finger, mm -hmm. so the whole gig I was just playing stuff like this, so I was pretty tired. Mm -hmm. but yeah. It wasn't, I haven't had any real problems with yeah. that. So be careful, though, make sure. But usually, like, I gig a lot, so. Usually during basketball season, I'll try to just do as the least amount of gigs that I need to do during basketball season. Mm -hmm. So then after basketball season, I'll just have a bunch of gigs after that. So the fall is usually just full of gigs and then winter when basketball. Does it make you play basketball differently though? Do you like kind of hold back a little no, bit or do you feel as aggressive no, not on the court? No, I'm not always <laughs> aggressive. Man, they they they, they young. They 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 don't care about that stuff. They <laughs> their fingers are invincible, man. I know for a fact. Um, anybody else have any questions for this fine basis? Um, my question for you is, what one do you think is harder, electric or um, upright? Um. I don't really know because I feel like it was beneficial for me to start upright first because like I remember I first started upright jazz and like I would come home and my fingers would be just like torn and like I would wear like band aid and stuff like that and then I started like once I started electric my fingers kind of had already um like kind of like got hard and tough so like yeah so like kind of playing on the electric wasn't that bad so but I feel like the upright bass was harder just because you have to learn on the positions but then um, electric kind of was different because like for me, it was getting used to having everything on the side and so everything oh, yeah. up here. So I think I would say upright was tough. Any more questions by anybody? Yeah, hey, uh, the horizontal versus the vertical base. Um, well, man, um, let me see. How, how could I put this here? Uh, Man, I ain't want to keep you, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, is there anything that you would like to say in closing, man, that you would like to say? Um, say, I just want to say thank you to all my mentors, um, Mr. Sean Dobbins, Mr. Ronnie Whitaker, Mr. Bob Hurst, Marion Hayden, um, Professor Elliot, uh, he's the conductor at Michigan Youth Symphony Orchestra for four years. He's helped me. Um, Chris Johnson, director of DSO. I'd like to thank my group members, Cameron Johnson, uh, Donovan Johnson, their father, Brandon Johnson, for all the support. My mom, of course. Um, if I'm leaving anybody, Mr. Ralph Armstrong, I have to say that one, especially. Um, if I'm leaving anybody else, I'm sorry, but I just like to say everybody, thank you for the support. Much appreciated. You know, they know who they are. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's awesome, man. Well, could you do us a favor before you leave, man? Um, let me know where to contact you if I want to... I've been following you ever since I met you. But somebody else want to follow and keep up with your career in music? Where can we do that at currently? So I have a trio. Um, our website is www.kdjtrio.com. And uh, it has a bio on all three of us. And then if you want to, we have links to our YouTube page. Uh, we have a Facebook page. It's uh, KDJ Trio, just on Facebook. And then we recently just got a Twitter page, uh, KDJ Trio, of 
course. Um, if you want to follow me, you can follow me on Twitter as well. Um, but on our website, we have uh, videos linked to YouTube and stuff like that. And if you want to contact us about a gig or anything, our contact information is on there. And that's pretty much it. Okay, I'm lazy. Y'all have a Facebook? I do have a Facebook. Uh, just Jonathan Muir Cotton, J O N A T H O N, and then M U I R hyphen C O T T. And then if you don't have a Facebook, you can follow me on Twitter, Jonathan, J O N A T H O N underscore M underscore C. Um, and that's just about it. I don't have an Instagram, so I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't have Tumblr, I'm sorry. I don't have front back, whatever. Front back, whatever. I don't have all that. I just have Facebook and Twitter. So you can reach me at those places. Okay, cool. Uh, last thing, man. Could you play us uh, out, you know, play something for us, but on a different instrument, maybe? Sure. Maybe some vertical? I mean, some horizontal, excuse me. <laughs> While he's doing that, Brendan's going to delight us with a... Oh, no. A&B <laughs> <laughs> selection. A&B selection. <laughs> All right, so closing us out, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jonathan Mir Cotton.